Yesterday, I thought I was very clever. I wanted to change the world. Today, I am slightly wiser. I am changing myself. I was one of those people that would never, ever have thought of climbing a mountain, let alone continue to climb many, many more. Only crazy weird people would do that, right? So why? Did I wake up one day and say, hey, I want to climb a mountain? Or was it one of those soul-seeking moments? It was neither for me. There is something about mountains that resembles life in itself, the journey of growth, the ups and downs, sometimes a bit lonely, confronted by one challenge after another. Between the beginning and the end, we wonder where do we even start? Am I good enough or can I really do this starts to creep in? Let me take you back in time where my relationship with the mountain even began. And it started with my grandma. Grandma, mountains, mountains, grandma. Where's the connection, right? But I'll share this story with you a bit later on. Christmas 2014, bored, bored with work and routine. I found myself scrolling on Scoop on and Spritz looking for the cheapest holiday getaway. And one advert caught my attention. 15 days in Nepal. Sounds interesting. A visit to the UNESCO Heritage Site. A welcome cultural dinner dance. An easy hike to the mountains. An easy hike to the mountains. I can do this. And a dip in the natural hot spring to finish off the hike. Sounds glamorous. All for $7.99. Holiday booked in. Little did I know, it was the start of a torturous journey. <laughs> Given we all know that there are no mountains here in Perth, well, the closest thing that I could find to train on was Jacob's Ladder. And for those who don't know what Jacob's Ladder is, it's a series of grueling steps that will test your strength, stamina, and endurance. And who knew going up and down the 242 steps times 10 was, um, oh boy, was a killer. Who am I kidding to climb a real mountain? The fear in me started brewing closer to date, and of course, I wasn't going to show that to my friends. Their comments, um, Visa, what experience do you have? Or will you even make it to the top? Didn't make me feel any better. In fact, it made me feel worse off. Perhaps they were right. I've overestimated my capabilities. As much as I tried finding thousands of reasons to cancel this trip, I found myself with my 25 kilo backpack in the pool. Skip the makeup, skip the high heels. Here I was in my boots and my blue down jacket, ready to embark on this 11 days mission to the mountains. Breathe, visa, breathe. You will survive this. Honestly, I didn't have any expectations and I was so ignorant to assume that one would live up on the mountains. There were no roads or any form of transportation and that means that the only way a person can have access to the hospital, the school or day-to-day -day supplies is by hiking down the mountains. Sometimes it would take a day or two before one reaches the nearest hospital. Along the way, I would bump into local villagers, cheering me on, Visa, you can do this, welcoming me into their homes, offering me hot meals 
together with them, living off their crops with basic supplies. There were no internet, no electricity, no clean running water. I once saw an elderly man dressed up so casually in his old pair of jeans and shirt, carrying a heavy load on his back. Yet he had the biggest smile ever. There was I, whinging about my seven-kilo backpack. I saw little kids dressed up so cutely in their uniforms, running down the mountains, heading off to school. A couple of the cheeky ones would be skipping off school, playing by the river banks. Giggling, entertaining themselves in the mud, so happy, so carefree. It got me thinking: since when did life become so complicated? Here we are with a roof over our head, good-paying jobs, yet we are still unhappy inside. At least, I was. The journey to the peak was a very, very long, lonely road. I found myself crying to bed most nights, cold, tired, hungry, and every single part of my body was in pain. I miss home, I miss my family, and I miss my comfort. For the first time ever, being far away from the noises of the world, it got me thinking. Why am I here, and what exactly am I trying to prove? Days and days and days of intense uphill climb, combined with the altitude sickness, got the very best out of me. I remember a very crystal clear image of me and my guide Milan leaving camp at sunrise, only to return to base in the pitch black cold night. I was angry. I was frustrated, and I was blaming Milan for the long days of walking. And his response to me was, "Visa, I am cold. I am tired, and I am hungry too. And the only reason that I am doing this is to feed my family." I didn't like who I was that day. So bold, so arrogant, so judgmental. It made me realize only I had control of my own emotions. Isn't it funny that sometimes we come home after a long day at work, or perhaps we were stressing about something, only to lash it out to our loved ones. So easy to react than respond. I get asked a lot what goes around in my head when I am up there on the mountains, or why do I constantly choose pain over comfort? I hundred percent agree. Climbing mountains is the furthest, furthest thing from being easy. A whole list of things that can go wrong, regardless how experienced you are, how prepared you are, testing you mentally, emotionally. Physically, bet you're wondering if I made it to the summit, right? Of course I did. And、um, what did I see? Rocks, rocks, <laughs> and more rocks. All the pain, all the tears, all the sleepless nights for this. <laughs> Overwhelmed with emotions. I cried like a baby. I used to believe climbing mountains was to prove a point that I was strong, I was fit. But flashes of memories, the people that I connected to, the interactions that I've had, the constant internal battles that I had with myself, those were the most precious memories that I could gather. From the experience, someone once told me, "Visa, you're not fit this hiker's image," and I didn't really understand what it meant at that particular time. 
Was I too chubby? Was I too feminine? I love my high heels. I love my bling blings. And since when do we have to fit into one single category? And so what if we don't? Remember, I was sitting at the peak crying. Well, at that particular point, I made a commitment to myself to never, ever step foot on the mountains again. <laughs> But we all know that didn't happen. One expedition led to another expedition and led to another expedition. Each mountain is holding a lesson of its own holding a special place in my heart up until today. Your journey and my journey are very likely to be different. Mountains will be forever there in our lives and we have a choice, a choice to face it head on or stay in the same place. It could be starting in family, changing career, grieving over our loved ones, or simply putting our past stories behind. Remember at the start, I spoke about my relationship with the mountains? Well, I owe my mountaineering journey to my late grandma. She was one strong-headed woman. And up until the final moments on her deathbed, she was still a fighter. I was in Perth, Western Australia at work that morning when I received a call from Dad saying that Grandma only had a couple more hours to live. And I knew at that moment it was my time to say my final goodbyes. So I picked up the phone and I rang her. Grandma, if you do need to go, please don't let me hold you back. I will forever love you and I will be home tonight. 30 minutes later, she passed away. When I landed in Malaysia the next morning, The funeral has already passed. I didn't get a chance to hug her one last time. I felt raw. I felt vulnerable. The person who inspired me to climb mountains, who believed in me, who always had my back, was no longer there. There were expectations of me to settle down, start a family, forgo my dreams. As much as I tried finding thousands of reasons to conform, I found one, one reason to fight. I chose me. I chose my happiness. And I chose my mountains. I remember her final words to me. My dear granddaughter, Fiza, don't ever stop climbing mountains. Do it for yourself and not for others. I used to believe I've made it when I reached the summit, only to learn deep down it was never the mountains we conquer, but ourselves. <laughs>